In the year 1928, a man is camping in the Karakoram Mountains in India. Suddenly a mysterious glowing thing appears outside his camp and he decides to take a closer look, only to discover a giant light ball covered by a thin layer of ice. After staring in awe for a moment, the man tries to hit it with his pickaxe, which immediately makes him fall and faint as the sphere glows brighter. When he wakes up moments later, he discovers the sphere is gone and there's a weird-looking scar on his body. Years pass and it's now 2008. An astrobiologist named Helen teaches at Princeton University before going home to her stepson Jacob. The boy has been distant since his father died, but Helen still cares for him deeply. Suddenly Helen gets a phone call from an unknown person, who tells her that a car is coming for her. At that moment, the police surround the house and an FBI agent knocks on the door to tell Helen she must come with him now. He refuses to explain anything and Helen doesn't want to leave Jacob alone, but fortunately the neighbor comes to see what's going on and Helen can leave Jacob with her. Afterward, Helen is taken away in a car, but the FBI agent still refused to answer her questions. Eventually they arrive at an airfield, where Helen boards a helicopter full of scientists from different fields, like a nuclear physicist and a civil engineer. Just like Helen, all these scientists were taken from their homes without an explanation. Moments later, the group arrives at the Linwood Military Academy in New Jersey, and the military asks everyone to leave their cell phones at the entrance. Helen acts quickly and hides her phone under her clothes before she's taken away by her old friend Michael, who put Helen on the vital list because of her work with a famous doctor called Carl. Then Michael gathers all the scientists in a room to do a presentation on the current situation. It turns out an unidentified object from space is approaching Earth following an unconventional trajectory, and according to their preliminary calculations, the object will inevitably collide with the planet. Because of its huge speed, it is impossible to shoot it down, so the government has decided to form an emergency response team that must deal with the consequences of this catastrophe. The team only has a little over an hour before the cosmic object crashes on Manhattan and kills around 8 million residents. After the meeting, Helen locks herself in the bathroom to call Jacob and tell him to hide in the basement, although she doesn't give him the details. Her conversation is overheard by one of the soldiers, but instead of arresting her, she asks to borrow the phone because she wants to call her family too. Afterward, the scientists travel to the site where the object will impact and quickly get alarmed because the object can't be identified and the rocket launch system is blocked. Terrified, they hold hands and count down the last few seconds, but to their shock, nothing happens. At that moment, they see through the window a bright ball of light slowly approaching Earth until it lands in the middle of Central Park, causing people to run away in terror. The scientists immediately put on protective suits and carefully approach the glowing sphere, feeling like there's something in the air around them, perhaps electromagnetic waves. Soon the police and the military show up with weapons and surround the area, and at that moment, a light begins glowing brightly on the sphere as an alien creature emerges to meet them. Helen slowly approaches the alien and he extends his hand to her, but when she tries to reach back, a shot is fired and the alien falls into her arms, visibly bleeding. Suddenly a huge creature appears out of the light and uses its powers to take away electricity in the area and incapacitate every piece of machinery. It also emits a terrible ultrasonic sound that stuns everyone's ears. Then the creature reaches for the wounded alien, but the alien stops it with a mere gesture and the robot immediately shuts down, allowing machinery to go back to normal. Afterward the injured alien is taken to a military laboratory, but the medics don't know how to treat an unknown creature, and they lose so much time that the alien begins getting worse. Helen advises them to bring in a surgeon to at least remove the bullet and they do exactly that. The surgeon makes an incision and removes the bullet easily, but he's also surprised at how similar to humans the alien is inside. He also notices that the gray skin-like tissue is cracking and separating from the alien's body, so he proceeds to remove the entire layer. To everyone's shock, the remaining creature looks very human. Next, the alien is put in a special protective capsule where his condition is monitored. Helen notices he's dreaming, and at that moment the alien wakes up, immediately panicking when he sees the capsule. With a friendly voice, Helen talks to him and tells him there's no danger, and the alien calms down while it's revealed he looks exactly like the mountaineer from 1928. For now he doesn't answer questions, he only repeats Helen's words. Meanwhile humanity is going through chaos and panic. Stock exchanges are closing, and New York citizens are being prepared for urgent evacuation. People around the world are also fleeing population centers on their own, fearing an alien invasion. While the president and vice president hide in a shelter, the secretary of defense Regina holds an emergency meeting and learns that the aliens have managed to hack into one of the spy satellites, so now they have all the classified information about national defenses. To make matters worse, more of these glowing spheres are landing all around the world. Arriving at the lab, Regina listens to the scientists' report. Flesh samples taken from the alien show the presence of DNA from three different life forms. The creature's body tissues are human, and the gray flesh shell is organic, which is a kind of protective suit of placenta. It seems the aliens had previously visited Earth and obtained a sample of human DNA, explaining the mountaineer's scar and why the alien could take a human form. Afterward, the group visits the alien, who is speaking perfect English and asks for water. His hand trembles as he brings the glass to his mouth, and he explains that it will take time for him to get used to this body. 
Regina tries to interrogate the alien, but her questions are ignored. Then Helen asks him to tell her about himself, so the alien introduces himself as Klaatu and says that he is a representative of a group of civilizations. He asks for a special meeting with the UN so he can talk to all the world leaders, but Regina refuses. Seeing as Klaatu won't offer any more details, Regina orders for him to be injected with truth serum and sent to a safer location for interrogation. The scientists believe that Klaatu is the most important discovery in human history and don't want to hand him over to the Secret Service, but Regina thinks this alien is a great danger to humanity and that falls under the jurisdiction of the Secretary of Defense. Michael and Regina get into an argument only to be interrupted by Helen, who assures them that she will personally inject the alien and perform all the necessary tests. Then Helen is given a vial of truth serum, but she sneaks into the pharmacy and secretly takes a vial of regular saline too. Meanwhile Regina tells Klaatu that he'll be transferred to a more secure location, and when Klaatu says he intends to leave, Regina informs him she won't let him because he has illegally invaded this planet and his huge robot has attacked the military. Klaatu points out that the bio-robot is only activated in the presence of violence, but Regina ignores that detail and orders Helen to administer the injection. Helen gives him the saline instead of the serum as she whispers to him that he must run. Afterward, Helen is immediately taken away and Klaatu is tied to a chair before he's taken to a room with a lie detector, where an agent asks him a series of control questions and monitors his readings on a monitor. Klaatu only offers a few vague answers before he uses his power to reprogram the lie detector and electrocute the agent. Then Klaatu takes control of the man's mind and asks him how to get out of the military base, he also orders him to give him the suit. Next, Klaatu uses his powers to take control of the security cameras and learns the location of all the guards so he can stun them all with ultrasound. An alarm goes off, but as everyone panics and runs around, Klaatu leaves the building quietly. In the middle of the chaos, Helen steals a sample of the alien's flesh, and Regina orders the use of all available resources to capture the fugitive. Eventually Klaatu arrives at the train station, where there is also complete chaos because of all the cancelled departures. Because his body is part human, Klaatu feels hunger, so he uses his powers to get a free sandwich from a vending machine while a kid watches in awe. Klaatu uses this chance to watch how society behaves, noticing how aggressive everyone is getting over having to wait. Suddenly he becomes ill and rushes to the bathroom, where he notices that he's bleeding and promptly passes out. Seconds later, Helen gets a call at her house telling her a patient is asking for her at the station. Realizing that it must be the alien, Helen immediately drives to the station and picks him up. Then she takes Klaatu to her car, where he meets Jacob, who is behaving rather rudely. Klaatu asks Helen to give him a sample of the gray tissue that was removed from him, and he uses it to dab it on his wound, instantly healing it. Meanwhile the American military attempts to attack the bio-robot, which detects the approaching danger and immediately activates. Thanks to its powers, it's easy for it to gain control of all military equipment and destroys it in seconds. All attempts to attack the alien fail, leaving the military leaders without knowing what to do. Back to Helen, she drives down a specific route that Klaatu asks her to follow. Jacob notices all the cars trying to leave the city and expresses his hate for aliens, saying they should be destroyed and that his father would have fought them if he had been alive. Eventually the trio arrives at their destination, and while Jacob goes to the bathroom, Klaatu asks Helen about his family. It turns out that the boy's father was a military engineer and his mother passed away in childbirth. Helen married Jacob's father, but he also died and now Jacob is under her care. Next, the trio enters a fast food restaurant and Klaatu meets with Mr. Wu, who is also an alien that took a human form and was sent to Earth 70 years ago to study humanity. Mr. Wu explains he's found humans to be destructive, stubborn, and unwilling to change, and Klaatu agrees, so he tells Mr. Wu to leave because he'll proceed with the operation. However Mr. Wu intends to stay on Earth because during his research, he saw the bad but also the good, and now he has a family of his own so he wants to spend his last moments with them. In the meantime, the military installs super strong protective panels around the inactive giant bio-robot, hoping this way they can block its powers. Their emergency hotline is drowning with hundreds of calls from people who have seen Klaatu, so the alien is officially presented as a fugitive criminal. Back to the trio, they are now heading for New Jersey. When they arrived in the woods, Klaatu asks to stop the car and leaves, so Helen tells Jacob to wait while she follows him. As she enters the woods, a swarm of weird insects flies past her, and she follows them to a lake where Klaatu is looking at the water. Suddenly another glowing orb emerges from the lake and Klaatu initiates the emergence protocol, which activates every single alien sphere that has landed all over the planet. A shocked Helen returns to the car, and Jacob can sense something wrong. He fears that Helen will marry Klaatu and he'll take his father's place, but he doesn't hear Helen when she denies it and he runs into the woods. Helen follows him and suddenly they notice a bright beam of light among the trees. It is the glowing sphere, which now is leaving the planet together with all the others. The only sphere that remains on Earth is the one in which Klaatu arrived. Speaking of Klaatu, he returns from the forest and tells Helen to take him back to the city, but Helen refuses to help him until she gets an explanation. 
Claude tells her that mankind is destroying the Earth, and since there aren't many planets in the universe where complex biological organisms can live, Claude has come to save Earth from the humans, believing that the planet can be reborn if all the human infestation is removed. Helen is appalled and tries to convince Claude that humans can change so they should get another chance, but Claude doesn't believe her because they've been watching humanity for years and change never came, now the situation has reached a tipping point. Besides, the process has already begun and nothing can be changed. At that moment, a policeman drives by and stops as soon as he recognizes the wanted man. He pulls a gun out and tells them to surrender, causing Jacob to ask Claude not to hurt the cop. However Claude says that his pain will be short and with a flick of his hand, he pushes Helen's car at the policeman, crushing him. Jacob freaks out, but Claude quickly connects his powers to the car and revives the cop using the vehicle's energy as a defibrillator. Claude explains that he didn't intend to harm the guy, he just wanted to remove a temporary obstacle. Helen is still convinced that Claude can stop everything if he wants to, so she proposes to take Claude to a man who will change his mind. Meanwhile the secret services are researching the various spheres that left Earth. Through video footage, they discover the glowing orbs are transporting many kinds of Earth creatures away into space. Regina realizes the spheres are arcs like Noah's, meaning a flood is coming soon. While the military places the bio-robot in a silo deep underground, riots begin to break out all over the planet and looting increases. Back to Helen, she brings Claude to see Carl, a Nobel Prize winning scientist she's worked with. When Claude finds a formula on a board, he decides to correct it, and Carl quickly joins him to solve the unfinished problem together. This allows Carl to guess Claude as the wanted alien. In another room, Jacob watches TV and sees the hotline number to call in case anyone has seen Klaatu. In the living room, Carl wonders how Klaatu's civilization managed to survive, and Klaatu explains that their son began to die out and they had to evolve to survive. Carl points out that was a case of change coming when a being is on the brink of extinction, and since humans are at that point now, they should be given some more time. This gives Klaatu a lot to think about, but their chat is suddenly interrupted by the appearance of Air Force helicopters. Klaatu, Helen, and Jacob leave Carl's house in a hurry, and on their way out, Carl tells Helene to change the alien's mind not by argument, but by action. The trio tries to hide from the military in the woods, but Jacob steps out into an open clearing to begin shouting and waving his arms to attract the attention of the helicopters, before confessing to Helen that he called them because that's what his father would have done. A devastated Helen tries to remind him that his father is no longer around, but this only makes the boy cry. Suddenly one of the helicopters captures Helen and immediately flies away. The other two helicopters spot Klaatu and prepare to open fire, but Klaatu uses his powers to stun the pilots and make the helicopters crash into each other. A terrified Jacob runs into the woods to escape, however Klaatu quickly catches up to him and saves him just in time from falling into the river. Then Klaatu convinces the kid to follow him. Moments later, Helen meets with Regina and asks her to let her go, explaining that Klaatu listens to her and only she can stop him, but Regina refuses. Meanwhile the special forces are experimenting on the giant bio-robot at the military base. They try to pierce its armor, only for the diamond drill to break. While the technician grabs another one, inside the cracks of the broken drill there are weird insects multiplying at an insane rate and eating the drill. Suddenly the giant robot begins to disintegrate into tiny little particles, which turn out to be bug-like nanorobots that instantly begin devouring everything around them. As the windows crack, some of the men want to escape, but the base has been sealed and now they can only wait. Soon everyone is turned to dust as the base is completely destroyed. The military reports back to Regina about the situation, explaining that the nanorobots are impossible to destroy. The missiles launched at them only increase the number of the alien bugs, and now that they've broken out, they have formed a huge cloud that moves in all directions and destroys everything in its path. Even a huge stadium turns to dust in seconds when the bugs reach it. Finally realizing there's nothing they can do, Regina releases Helen so she can talk to Claudu, and Michael will be going with her. In the forest, Claudu brings Jacob to a woodsman's cabin and lets him call Helen's cell phone. Once they've agreed on a safe place to meet, Jacob and Claude start making their way out, and Jacob admits that he no longer wants Claude dead. This makes Claude question his beliefs about the nature of humanity. Moments later, they arrive at the cemetery where Jacob's father is buried, and he desperately asks Claude to use his resurrecting power as he did earlier with the patrolman. However Claude's powers have a limit and there's nothing he can do for a rotten body. Furious, Jacob tells Claude to leave, but at that moment Helen shows up and runs to the boy to hug him tightly, trying to comfort him. Jacob finally comes to terms with his father's death, and he and Helen apologize to each other for their recent behavior, agreeing to be a proper family from now on. Seeing such an emotional moment convinces Claude that humanity has a positive side and that humans deserve another chance. To do so, they need to change themselves and their way of life, and when Helen promises they will, Claude watches the nanorobots and says he'll try to stop them. The cloud of nanorobots is quickly taking over New York City and eating up everything in their path, no matter if it's people, buildings, or vehicles. Regina talks to the President of the United States, explaining they're trying to solve this through peaceful negotiations. However the President is desperate and orders her to resume military action. Helen, Jacob, 
Klaatu, and Michael rush back to New York where the remaining sphere is. All streets are empty except for the military blocking the roads, but Klaatu makes Michael drive right through them. At first the soldiers begin chasing them, but soon they receive orders to stay back. Seconds later, the group makes it to Central Park and is surprised to see all the military and scientists are gone. At that moment, the Air Force begins bombing the area like the President wanted, causing the car to flip and crash while a huge fire begins engulfing the park. Unfortunately Michael dies, but the others are okay. The nanorobots arrive at the area and begin cracking up the car, so Clotted takes Jacob and Helen out, intending to reach the sphere. However the bug cloud is already surrounding the globe and covering the sky, so the trio has to run to hide under a bridge. Suddenly Jacob's nose begins bleeding and he passes out as Helen's nose begins bleeding as well. Claudu explains they're dying because the bugs are slowly eating them from inside, so Helen begs for his help. The alien grabs their hands and uses his powers to make the bugs come out, absorbing them into his own body instead. While Jacob wakes up, Claudu confirms Carl was right, humans are capable of change when on the edge of the abyss. After giving the family a goodbye look, Claudu steps outside and slowly forces his way through the cloud of nanorobots until he reaches the sphere. Then he touches the glowing orb, which results in his body disintegrating but also the destruction of all the nanobots. As the dead bugs fall all over the planet, all technology also goes out of commission and cities are plunged into darkness, which is the price humanity must pay for what they've done to Earth. Helen and Jacob come out to watch the glowing sphere leave their planet, and Jacob implies that Claudia's essence is still inside. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.